Hey, how's it going? Really? That good? Well, welcome to my presentation on multiple digit subtraction. Talking about big number subtraction here, so not single digits. All right, no seven minus three. If you don't know how to do that kind of stuff, you're watching the wrong video. You already got to know how to do that. We're going to move forward into bigger numbers that we need to subtract. So, as always, you're going to ask me, why do I got to know this? Why is this important to me? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. One being, you got to know how to subtract if you want to move forward in mathematics, okay? Subtraction is a basic, a key component of just about everything in math. So if you don't learn how to subtract, it's going to be hard to do anything beyond this. Uh, and a reason that it's really important to me is money. You know, when you spend money, you're subtracting. Okay, so if you don't know how to do it right, you might not know uh, if you're getting ripped off or not. So let's go ahead and take a look of an example of someone who doesn't know how to subtract and what happens to them because of it in a segment that I like to call getting schooled by Mr. C. All right, uh, see if you can identify where Foster, our victim here, goes wrong. All right, go ahead and check it out. schooled but if you don't know how to subtract you don't know why so let's learn how to do it all right we're gonna look at three different problems here first and foremost I want you to remember when you're doing this you must line up your place values all right here's our first problem 38 minus 14 our second problem 164 minus 18 alert you're going to be borrowing here. Borrowing? I don't know how to do that. We'll get. We'll we'll talk about that when we get there. All right. But suffice it to say, you're going to be doing a new and special skill when you are trying problem number two, or when or when we're trying it together. And our third problem, three hundred and three minus eight. No, 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 no. You're going to be borrowing again. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and try number one. Now, remember, always line up our place values. If you remember the video on multiple digit addition, I like to write my problems from the right to the left. So I'm gonna write 38 like this. I'm gonna start out with the eight and then go to the three. That makes lining up our ones places real easy. Okay, so 14, the ones places, eight and four are lined up, and the tens places, three and one are lined up. Now we simply go all the way to the right. Again, remember it's the opposite of reading. Reading, you go from left to right. Math, a lot of times you go from right to left. So what's eight take away four or eight minus four? Four, if you didn't know that, you're watching the wrong video. What's three minus one? Two, woohoo! So what is the answer to 38 minus 14? 24, that's right. All right, let's go on to the second problem. I'm going to line it up like this again. So we're going to take 164. There's the ones place. There's the tens place. There's the hundreds place. We're going to take away 18. So here's the eight in the ones place lined up with the four from the ones place there. And the one from the tens place lined up really nice. Okay, here's the hard part. Pay attention. This is how you borrow. This is how you borrow, all right? Can you take eight away from four? No. If you had $4 and I said, hey, give me eight, could you? No, you can't. So you can't actually subtract here. You have to borrow. The four goes, hey, six, let me get some. Okay, so the six becomes a five. You're gonna take one away from the six, so the six becomes a five. No, actually, that's the tens place. So that six is a 60. <gasps> that means you're taking 10 away if you're going all the way down to 50, okay? So then you can turn the four 
into a 14. You see how I just added a one in front of the four? Some people like to just write the one right there and turn it into 14. I like to cross it out and turn it into a 14. Okay, so when you borrow, you take one away from the number to the left. Okay, six becomes a five. And you put a one in front of the number that is borrowing. So the four becomes a 14. What's 14 minus eight? You know that? Six. See, now you can do it. All right, and what's, now you just keep going. Five minus one is four. And then one minus zero is one. So what's the answer to 164 minus 18? <laughs> I hope I'm right. Yes, 146. Woo! All right, we got one more to go. This one is the trickiest one of them all. So remember, I'm writing my ones places first. Then I go to my tens place, then my hundreds place, and then I make sure that I line up my ones places, okay? An eight, well, it's the only number there, so of course it's in the ones place is underneath my three that's in the ones place there. So what's three minus eight? If you said five, punch yourself in the brain. <clears throat> it's not five. You can't take eight away from three. You're subtracting the wrong way, okay? You have to borrow. So the three goes, hey, zero, let me borrow. Wait a minute. You can't borrow from a zero. So the zero goes, oh, wait, hold on a second, three. I can borrow from this three over here. And the zero goes, hey, three, let me borrow a little something. All right, so the three goes, all right, fine. The three becomes a two, right? We're taking one away from the three. And then we're going to put a one. I'll do it the way that some people like to do it, in front of the number here. So now this is a 10, right? If you wanted to cross out the zero and just write 10, you can do that, OK? So now the three goes, oh, man, 10. Let me borrow one. So the 10 goes, all right. So the 10 becomes a, what's the 10 become? I hope you said nine. Remember, we're only taking one away when you borrow. And the three becomes a 13. Okay, see how I just put the one in front of the three? Remember, if you want to cross it out and write 13 up top, you can. So what's 13 minus eight? All right, now you can give me the answer of five. 13 minus eight is five. What's nine minus zero? Well, duh, that's an easy one. Nine minus zero is nine. And what's two minus zero? Two minus zero is two. So 303 minus eight equals 295. If you have to back this up and check out borrowing a couple times to, to actually make sure that you're doing it right or you understand it the right way, go right ahead. You're gonna be trying this uh, in the near future. Um, and I'm even going to give you a subtraction problem to try in a minute. But if there's any confusion about borrowing, you're going, wait a minute, I don't. Okay, back up the video till before I gave you all these answers. Line up the problems and see if you can do them the right way first. And then check and make sure that you borrowed the right way. Because borrowing is, is kind of a tricky skill, but it's very, very, very important. All right. Okay. Woo. All right. Let's move forward. What did we learn? Well, first. We learned that multiple digit subtraction is important. I think it's super important, especially when you're dealing with money, all right? Or when you're paying people or giving people things, subtraction is very important. You have to line up your place values. Just like with addition, you gotta line up the ones places and then the tens places. If you do it wrong, your answers are gonna be all sorts of messed up. So make sure that you line them up the right way, okay? And then finally, we learned how to borrow a very important skill that you're gonna have to practice, practice, practice. Okay, so let's try this multiple digit subtraction that we just learned. And let's back it up and learn or see how Foster got schooled. All right, do you remember Foster's problem? Well, I was holding on to 54 pieces of candy for him. He told me I could keep 12 of them, but I only gave him 30 back. Was that fair? You do the math, you do the math, all right? Line up your place values, try the problem, see how many pieces of candy I actually owed him. Okay? I hope this helped. You definitely need to practice this, especially borrowing. If you want to write down some problems of your own, or if you want to go and find some worksheets from your teacher, or ask your mom, or your grandma, or somebody for help practicing this, it's very important that you try it, try it, try it, because you're not going to get good at it until you try it a lot. 
Okay, so uh, again, I hope this helped.